tonight on Wise Guy. You're thinking of serving up our business for dinner. That's insane. It's my business before it's our business. Now, this is a chance for us to get into the rag trade at a level we've never been before. You want to give this to Terranova? You can't selectively cooperate. And you can't use me as a trough to feed Goombas to the Justice Department. But well, what are you doing to me, Vinny? What do I have left when you are done? David, I will not let that happen, believe me. This business is a jungle. You hustle or you die. Trucker, cutter, rack jobber. The broad on the runway with the metronome cervix and the I'm too stupid to be anything but bored punum. <laughs> Nobody gets a pass, honey. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm teaching you something. It's a jungle, shoulder to shoulder at the watering hole, and everybody's looking for their own personal delta. My father came here looking for the Jordan. Maybe you're looking for the Yangtze. <laughs> Any event, it's the same thing. You hang on to this machine and hope. You hope the pattern's right. The cutter followed it, and your sweat doesn't drip on it. And if the stars favor you, you'll get a piece of material that'll feed your family through another season. Now, when something goes wrong, you don't cry about it. You fix it. You don't think about it. You do it. Dad. Like this, like this. You Dad. understand? Dad. She doesn't speak English. Damn it, where's Bill? I sent him home to make the sucker. He used to be the best cutter in the business. Now he's taking advantage of me. Let me see. Turn around. Oh, here. Work it, sweetheart. Work it. You took care of customs. There's a lot of red tape. You don't know how to deal with anything that isn't neat and clean, do you? What I certainly don't know how to do is finish a sentence around you. So finish. The Korean order came in on Japanese documents. Japan's exceeded quota. Now, I've already talked to the international trade guy at Hyam's office. It could take a month. A month? I'm eating a couple of million dollars. Th How many times have I told you, do not take no for an answer? 14,000. Mr. Jackson's here. Did you see Coke bottles? Yeah, he doesn't have the money. Can't you do anything right? I made the dean's list. I was thinking this decade. It's a beaut, huh, George? It could sell in the window. So, uh, what do we got here? Poly ray cotton, profits built in. Take a good look. Does this feel good? Very good. You want to have dinner? I have to check my calendar. What do you think you want to take, George? You think she'll go out with me? George, you got great charisma. Let's do the order first. I don't want your casuals. But I'll take 300 units each on the career line, and uh, you can give me that in a vibrant blue and green? Of course. All right, 200. I need it on the floor in three weeks. Three weeks? Put a gun to my head. Anything else, Eli? What about tonight? Three weeks, George? 
tack on the overtime, and I'll cover it. Tonight's just fine, Mr. Jackson. Half million dollar short order, and two million mill doing in the harbor. Coke bottles will cover it. No problem with the 500K. Good, what about the two million? You dreaming. I'm dreaming? Who do you think you're talking to? God. I'm talking to God. He's hiding in the refrigerator. Johnny, I gotta reproduce and deliver on that order in 10 days or I eat it. You want the 500? No problem. The two mil. It ain't there. Johnny. 25 years, Johnny. I helped you get started. You want two mil? Huh? There's only one place in 7th Avenue you can get that kind of cash. We don't do business there. I'll make that decision. Come on. Come on. You want the five hundred or not? Yeah, I want the five. You know what you are, Johnny? Yeah, I know what I am. A survivor. Mr. P, Johnny Coke bottles calling. I got over 125,000 in T bills and stocks I can borrow against. You got over 800,000 in equity on your castle. You don't put your personal property at risk for business. Oh, oh, that's smart. That is really smart. You put your life at risk, but you keep your estate intact. I've been doing business with Pinzola for 40 years. With his father for trucking. Going to Rick for money is stupid. I won't have you using that tone of voice with me. What you know about this business, you could put in a thimble. And what's going to be left of this business after Pinzolo's through with it, you can put in a thimble. Dad, I went to school with Rick. He's not his father. He keeps score by consumption. You're thinking of serving up our business for dinner. That's insane. It's my business before it's our business. Look, Dad. David. David. It will work out. It always does. Forget about it for now. Let's have a nice circus. Beautiful sucker again, Uncle Phil. Same old sucker. Hey, what is wrong with your father? Who knows? Who knows? He's usually all teeth at these things, showing off his latest shakes of wife. Business is bothering you, huh? You've been through it before. I was there at the beginning. <laughs> Uncle Phil. <laughs> I was the beginning, David. <sighs> There's your family. Yeah, I always put that picture. Carol? David! Hi, Hi sweetheart. Hi. Mwah. You look great. Lil, no. no, you look wonderful. Such a warm woman. <laughs> Don't pick on my mother. You know she hates these family things. What she hates is my father, who has certainly not been Gorian, but hate. She wouldn't be happy if she wasn't hating somebody. I gotta talk to you. Confidential. Ira, can you do me a favor, could you take this? Sure. What's up? Carol, you're, you're pretty directly involved in some major takeovers, right? Yeah. We got a problem at Elrose. We're in the position of not making deadline on an order without a $2 million line of credit. We've got a solid contract to borrow against. You know anybody we could turn to for an assist? David, there's nobody in this family I care about as much as you. That's a no, right? Put together two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You can have it all. I need two million. I'm about to put together the biggest deal of my life. If I go in asking for this kind of favor, it's going to dilute my position with the company. I understand. What about the Shikza goddess? Isn't she all money? She's all pretense. She's just another Midwest spy who saw Dad as the best bet for her new fall line. Well, rumor has it that she tried you on first. Carol. Well, is it true? Carol, how... Well... 
Come on, you remember how it used to be. Hopping bars on Columbus Avenue. Three o'clock in the morning, a little too much champagne, a little too much smoke. <laughs> you know, three years later, who remembers who you're bumping into? You know, you don't remember names or faces or... Actually, I, I do... I do remember a little mold. <laughs> David. Where are you going to get this money? OK. Hey, come on, forget that. I don't want you feeling guilty. It's out there. Somebody will sell us the money. The money is uh, no problem. The money is a pleasure. To help the Sternbergs is an opportunity. Okay, this is the deal. Money at two points above prime. Consulting fee of 1% a month on a full loan, while money is outstanding. All checks to all vendors will be drawn directly from this office, for which there is a one-point monthly service fee. And your contract with Amici Trucking will be updated to reflect contemporary charging practices. Four cents a unit. That's more than double what we're paying him each now. I know, yeah. I had an agreement with your father. Going back 40 years, I know. My father, <clears throat> God bless him, he had a heart of gold. But uh, as a businessman, and I mean no disrespect, he was an idiot. So. Maybe you should shop the deal before you decide. Who's got time for shopping? You got a deal. David, we did a deal. <clears throat> I didn't know you collected art. Oh, yeah, yeah, art. Art's something you keep your money in while you're looking for a better place to put it. Would you like some juice? Uh, no, thank you. Um, when do you think, Rick? Uh, the paperwork this afternoon. You can uh, cut the checks the minute you sign it. Fine. Come on, David. David, stick around for a minute. I'd like to, uh, to talk, if that's... Yeah, it's okay. I'll, I'll be too late. Yeah. What's the matter with you? You object to this arrangement? I'm gagging on it. Why? Who are you kidding, Rick? Tell me your intent isn't taking over railroads and draining its assets. You show me once where you haven't done that. This is a business. This is my future. It's not another collectible you can hang on your wall while you're looking for a better place to put your money. My father's convinced himself he can deal with you because he's dealt with your father. Mm -hmm. He's so desperate, he's obliviating that little bit of telling nostalgia. Calling your father an idiot businessman. I didn't know you harbored such deep resentment. Resentment? Try fear. I've seen the gun in your hand, Ricky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Come on. There's no gun here. It's still there. I can see it in your eyes. I can read you. I've been able to read you since college. We were kids then. Those were good times, huh? They were worthless. The world wasn't real to me then. Well, it is now, David. Let me tell you something. Old college buddies will only cut you so much slack. OK? David. Don't stand in my way. Mr. Sternberg, rest assured the government sympathizes with your situation. Sympathy I can get from my mother. I came to you because my business is I in danger. I it was your father's business. It will be my business. I'm trying to prevent it from being bled white. Who by? Look, Mr. Epstein, I don't know how much you know about the rag trade, but I've got $2 million worth of winter coordinates floating out in the harbor because some jerk in customs made a mistake on a bill of lading. Three months ago, we had a fire at our factory in wilkes -Barre. A few weeks before that, at our place in Reading, two of our cutting machines went down at the same time. Has Elro's been making enemies lately? 
What I need you to understand is what kind of man my father is. When he was a kid, his bedroom was a closet, literally a closet. There's no difference between business and personal. With him, everything is personal. Every time he gets an order, he's back in Flatbush again, fighting to get out. You have orders to fill? 500,000, three week turnaround. Goods tied up, fires, machine breakdowns. Sounds like El Rose is in need of ready cash. You go to your factor. It's a guy named Johnny Pakula. You go to Coke bottles. Maybe he doesn't have it. Or maybe he does and he won't give. You have a delivery date. And if you're one day late, they can refuse to accept and you got bupkis. So you go elsewhere because you need the money. Where does your father go, Dave? Feinstein? Pellegra? You came to us, am I right? You know, I was in the Navy. And after six months at sea, you're so horny, you could deflect bullets. You don't care who, you don't care what. You need a broad. You've seen the films, you know the risks. means nothing, because you need it. So you do. Then later you realize you got a souvenir. Maybe you notice it in time, you get rid of it. But maybe you don't. Before you know it, it eats away inside you until your brain looks like Swiss cheese. And then, boy chick, you die a death I wouldn't wish on Hitler. All because of need. Look, Marv Bubbler, you don't have to boy chick me. I came in here ready to blow the whistle. I'm not an idiot. I read the papers. The guys who are dirty, they continue to eat at 21, and the whistleblowers get nailed to a cross. Where did your father go? I want your word my father won't be prosecuted. I can't give you that. Not until I know who the players are. I want your word my father won't be prosecuted. Give me the right name, and you've got it. Ricky Pinzolo. My father borrowed money from Ricky Pinzolo. We've used their trucks for 38 years, but we never, we never went to them for money. I told my father to wait it out. We'll get the money somewhere else, but he's a real stubborn son of a bitch. He's ruled by his emotions. His ego tells him he can get out of Pinzolo's grip. Nobody else has been able to. Why him? Uh, well, it took a lot of guts to open up like that. Thanks to Marv Epstein, the Bureau's version of sodium pentothal. All right, now, what we have here is a partial breakdown of the garment industry in New York. It generates $20 billion a year annually. These are some of the guys that slice up the pie. Now, the broken lines indicate suspected connections, but nothing that'll stand up in court. Now, this is Al Rose Fashions. That's Eli and David Sternberg. The subsidiaries are Stylish Juniors and Missy Renee. Now, they ship with Amici Trucking, which is one of the six companies controlled, if you follow the Yellow Brick Road far enough, by Ricky Pinzolo. Pinzolo has never been charged with any criminal activity. He inherited control of trucking, union organizing, loan sharking, political corruption from his father, Carmine. And the point is, that David Sternberg is so worried about his father, the business, or himself that he's willing to throw out the welcome mat for us. That would mean that David Sternberg knows our undercover operative. Correct. What about Eli Sternberg? As far as Eli Sternberg is concerned, or anybody else at El Rose, our operative is a former bent nose who is now a corporate security specialist. Now, this is a chance for us to get into the rag trade at a level we've never been before. We get to fill in some of these broken lines. You want to give this to Terranova? Yep. What makes you think he'll take it? Benzola is the pinnacle of organized crime in a multi-billion dollar industry. If Vinny feels like he can trust Sternberg, he'll take it. Thanks, Jason. I won't be that long. Terranova? Yeah. I am David Sternberg. Yeah, I know. Send your limo back to the office. What? I don't want it parked in front of my house. Jason, go back to the office. I'll take a cab.
You know what they say, less is more. My grandmother had a house like this. Yeah, it was my mother's house. She gave it to me when she remarried. I like being in the neighborhood. Anything else you want to know? No. Now, why should I make you the most important man in my life? All I know about you is what's in your file. You're a rich man's kid who likes the beautiful people in the club scene. And you like to take flings, promote concerts, run in restaurants, produce an off-Broadway. But when things go sour, you come running home to daddy. Look, Mr. Terranova, with all due respect, you don't know what you're talking about. What I don't know is why I should walk into your world and trust you to keep me alive. Because that's your job. Look, I didn't ask to come here. Epstein told me to do it, so I did. You're not doing me any favors. I put my father's life, my own, and our business on the line by letting us become your conduit to Pinzolo. I don't need any favors from you. You're right, David. Look, I got a friend get you dealing some blinds. You want to do verticals? Does Eli know I'm joining the firm? Yeah, when we get to the office, don't worry. It won't be a problem. Fire that son of a Dad? bitch! Dad? Without Dad? talking to me, you hire an ex-con that's a security specialist, and you tell him about the business. There are problems, Dad. There are always problems. I take care of them myself. Fire him. I can't. Well, then get him in here. I'll do it. He's already cashed his first check. Fire him, you're out 10,000 bucks. Have you ever wanted anything that I didn't give you? When you were 16 years old, you went to Europe. You wanted the Red Alpha in college, you got the Red Alpha. Dad, this isn't about what I drove 20 years ago. Then what is it about? It's about what you started and what I'm gonna finish. Every day, every day you remind me, it's your business, it's your business. Well, someday it's gonna be mine. It's my future, I have the right to protect it, even from you. All right, David, where is he? Vinny Terranova, this is my father, Eli Sternberg. How do you do? Glad to know you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Good to be here. Security specialist, huh? That's right. Would you like to tell me about your qualifications? Well, I... Or better yet, why don't you just make a muscle? My son here thinks we have problems I can't handle. Now, I'm busy. I have to go to work. And since you've already cashed your check, I'd like you to see Johnny Coke bottles. He used to be my factor. Tell him I sent you. Then beat his head in, then I never want to see you again. What's this to ah! Who's all I have? He's all I have. Not enough. Thirty-five hundred dollars a week's your tap machine. Please, it's been a bad month. <laughs> If you had a bad month, I have to suffer, huh? I want the money you owe me. I don't get the money you owe me. Your wife and kids aren't gonna be safe hiding in Fort Lee. You got one more week, Rashid. And then things start to get rough. Say goodbye, huh? Immigrants, you go to help them, and you take it up the yin. What can I do you for? I want you to tell me why you won't cooperate when it comes to lending Eli Sternberg money. Who the hell are you? My name's Vinny Taranova. I work for Mr. Sternberg in an advisory capacity, and I advise you to tell me why all of a sudden your well ran dry. Close the door, Vinny. Taranova, Taranova, where did I... You had a pretty good run down Atlantic City, didn't you? With that clown, steel grave. I want to play the Christmas tree. Same Taranova? Yeah, so what? So let me illuminate you. This is the real world. There's no glamour here, no showgirls in the casinos. And uh, you don't come around asking questions without prior approval. And that approval don't come from Eli Sternberg. Better up! Ah! I said get out of here!
Who is it? Rick Pinzolo. Who? Mr. Pinzolo. Come on in. Vinny Terranova? Mr. Pinzolo. Why are you so rude to me, Vince? Oh, I'm sorry. I'd, I'd get up, but uh, I'm working on one wheel right now. You want a beer or something? No, 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 no. Thanks. So what are you doing? You're working my business, huh? I had to find this out secondhand. Hey, you're 100% correct, Mr. Pizzola. I'm sorry, it was rude not to call on you. I didn't think I was working your business. David Sternberg hired me to keep an eye on his father. He's under a lot of pressure. If the problems the Sternbergs have are with you, I'll quit immediately. The industry's problems are my problems. You see, we're all singular parts of a unified, holistic community called Seventh Avenue. And as much as you work for them, you work for me. Now, Eli does not need to know this. You see what I'm saying, Vince? Yeah, it's very clear, Mr. Pinzola. Okay. Rick. Rick. Vince. I want you to wear this, okay? It's my private little connection with you. And I don't want to hear that, you know, like the batteries have gone dead or something. That's not a problem. Is there anything else? No, no, that's it. Just uh, do your job and uh, I'll be back in touch. Okay. Hey, Rick. This come from you? What happened? I got kissed by a Louisville slugger. Oh, really? <laughs> Business should be in simple black and white, huh? No, no, no. I have my uh, dilemmas dealt with bluntly. Intimidation is not my style. I had nothing to do with that. So then you don't have a problem if I collect on this debt, huh? No, no. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Oh, by the way, didn't your mother marry uh, Rafael Ayupo? Yeah. Well, welcome to La Familia. Well, thank you. See you, Vince. Take care of yourself. Pinzola came to your house and gave you this? Yeah. It's a bug. It's not a bug, Frank. It's the normal everyday pager. I checked it. I'm gonna get this guy. It cannot be that easy. I'm setting a personal goal for myself here. All right, well, while you're chumming for Pinzola, anything else swims your way, you send it to me. Johnny Copals. You know, the lending he does to the Sternbergs is legitimate, but this guy is definitely a Shylock. I interrupted him, bouncing a guy's head off his refrigerator. Then he took a baseball bat to my leg. All right, Vince, just how bad is this? Probably be gimping around for a couple of weeks. Anyway, the victim's name is Aaron Farshi. He's probably an Iranian refugee. You play your cards right, he'll cave. All right, Aaron Farshi. Any idea where I can find him? Yeah, he's out in Fort Lee. Coke bottle threatened his wife and kid. All right. I'll work it. Now, I've got something for you. El Rose's embargoed goods? The shipping documents and labels were tampered with somewhere between Korea and New York. Customs didn't bother to look past the dotted line. Now, I can release the Sternberg whenever you want. Well, who tampered with him? I don't know, maybe Pinzola. Nah. Pinzola's too big to be wasting time bleeding El Rose. All right, is there anybody else in this play that's capable of forging international trade documents at sea? I don't know. Well, you want the goods released or not? Not yet. I think we can get some mileage out of this. All right, I'll work for she. We'll see if we can bring down Johnny Coke bottles. Hey, after what he did to me, I'm living for it. I'm going to drive him right into your arms, and he's going to give us Pinzola. Well, you're awful sure of yourself. Hey, Frank, Pinzola tried to put a collar on me. I don't like being led around at the end of a leash. I would have never known that. 
I said 10 days, not 10 working days. Don't you people ever work weekends for crying out loud? Phil, you want me to roll my sleeves up? You're not a cutter, Eli. And what is that supposed to mean? That. I talk to Morty. The Secaucus shops will assemble. We can meet Jackson's deadline. Good, you did something right. You noticed. Yeah, one in a row. And you, I send you to see Pakula, and you come back on the disability list. That's perfect. Obnoxious, isn't he? But he was tough to grow up with. It's amazing I don't have menstrual cramps. <laughs> Listen, I need to talk to you privately, all right? Johnny yeah. Coke bottles for cooler. Oh, Why? This guy is a Shylock that hurts people. I can testify to that. I didn't come to you about Johnny Coppola. I know why you came to us. And let's stick to the agenda. You can't selectively cooperate. And you can't use me as a trough to feed Goombas to the Justice Department. You let that gig zap you. He's bragging about it all over town. And now I'm supposed to help you with some petty getting even? This, this stinks, my friend. Is this the price I'm supposed to pay for protection? Becoming an informant? But, well, what are you doing to me, Vinny? What do I have left when you are done? Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. But I'm climbing a mountain here, David. If you can't help me get my footing, then how am I supposed to help you? <sighs> Love being an adult. Yeah, me too. Wanna go to a nickname? Yeah, sure. Want to get out of this business? Yeah. Yes! <sighs> I'm going to spend the next three years up to my public in depositions, interrogatories, and federal courts. Or eternity in a cornerstone of some Staten Island social club. David, I will not let that happen. Why do I believe this guy? Ah. Johnny Coke bottles Pakula is the moral equivalent of sludge, which makes him indistinguishable from most people in his line of work. Yeah, I know that, but is he directly connected to Benzola? Benzola's got his hands in just about everybody's pocket. So to that degree, he probably has an arm's length relationship with Coke bottles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe you're right to go after him. I mean. Maybe Johnny didn't give us the money because Pinzolo told him not to. Well, why would he do that? Because we're here. I mean, to use your mountain climbing analogy, he's a conqueror of rag merchants. We're here, he'll conquer us. It's reason enough. Johnny, where's your stun gun? Benzola gave me permission. Okay, okay, now we're even. Uh, no, we're not even yet, Johnny. There you go. There, there. Now we're even. Better off. Get out of here, pretty boy. Mr. P. Yeah, Johnny. For she'd talk, Johnny. I'm sorry, Johnny's gonna have to call you back. Right now, he's being arrested. Vinny just called and wants us to meet him down at the loading dock. Morty's factory was hit with a wildcat strike. 
They never talked to him. They just walked. We'll never make the Jackson delivery date. David, we've lost a half a million dollars. Why is this happening? It's like, it's like I'm a leper. Our goods are still stuck on the ship. I never missed a delivery date. In 40 years, I never missed. You'll make it work. You always do. Let me ask you something, David. I'm your father. How could you ever think of me as an enemy? I mean, when you said that you had to protect your future from me, that hurt me very much, David. Dad, we say things when we're upset. All of us. Not me. No, not you. No. David, we have to try to be nicer to each other. Vinny's waiting for us down at the dock. His week is over tomorrow. I want him out of here. OK? OK. Yo. I'm in a production crisis turnover. What is it? You got your Korean merchandise. Everything's here? Every snap, button, and zipper. <laughs> How'd you do that? I made a muscle. I love this man. At last, we got a guy with some moxie. Consider yourself employed on a long-term contract. Thank you very much. So, Dad, what are we going to do about Jackson's order? Tomorrow morning, I pay off Pinzola. I go to the bank, and I borrow against this merchandise. Then I have the cash I need to go to Cutters as far away as Carolina. The hell with Morty's Wildcatters. I can fill Jackson's order without them, but I'm going to have to pay Pinzola 35 grand for one week's vig because you were sitting on your brains in customs. I made a muscle. <laughs> I love that man. <laughs> Take it from me, love is fleeting. Here's your lunch money. I don't eat lunch. Oh, that's right. You puree it, don't you? How'd you get the money so fast? Oh, my little problem with customs was resolved. Your father, may God rest his soul, and me, if we had a problem, we handled it ourselves. We got our hands dirty. Yeah, that relationship served you well, didn't it? Hmm. You skated for years paying Barnard basement trucking rates. I agreed to pay the going rate. The going rate is gone. It'll be eight and two. How the hell am I going to live at eight and two? I guess you'll have to get your hands dirty. Well, I'm not going to pay it. I'll get independence. I'll pick up drivers on the street. You'll pay it, Eli. Because as far as you're concerned, Amici trucks are the only trucks in town. You're going to get somebody else to drive for you? Who? The union won't allow it. And you're a little too old to get behind the wheel yourself. Your father would never do this, punk. Wait, 10 years ago, half of what walked in here alone wouldn't wake up that way. 10 years ago, I wouldn't have walked in here at all. Do you marry? No. Ever? No. You should. Everybody should. They should go home and be with their kids at night. Rather than this every other weekend, we better have fun routine. How old are your kids? Five and seven. Boys. That's nice. Yeah. The other day, the older one says, Dad, when I grow up, you want me to come into the business with you? And I say, honey, you, you could be whatever you want to be. I'll be happy. As long as you're happy. He thinks it over for a while. He says, mm, no, I, I don't think so. I said, why? 
It says because then we couldn't be friends. David. Margo. Oh, you look great. Thank you. Why don't you give me a call later? Bye. So who's that? CPF. CPF? Close personal friend. Well, it's the 12th CPF tonight. We've only been here 10 minutes. Fringes of the trade. Fringes of my trade are tattoos and cigars. I'm talking about girls. <laughs> yeah, so am I. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't order any champagne. I did. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> I'll, I'll pull. <laughs> Ooh, look at this here. The last time I checked, this stuff was going for a hundred and a half a bottle. You saved Elrose two million dollars. I can splurge. It's another day at the office, David. You know what I mean? Sir, Vincenzo, how long do you think it will take to uh, to find what you're looking for? You mean how long till I'm gone, right? Listen, David. Pinsola didn't stay out of the slammer all these years because he's stupid. Now, he's, he's far from stupid. So, there's no, uh, no time frame on this? I don't know. No, what, what I mean is it could, could take months, years. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. <sighs> Thanks for the two million. Shut down. Well, Did I say that right? <sighs> Fine. So how long have you been divorced? Four years, three and a half months. Probably the first decision I ever made that my father agreed with. Now, the day my father divorced my mother, he gave her a diamond necklace, and he said, this is for all the years I couldn't afford it. Hmm. You talk to your father? No, nah, he, he died when I was 18. I'm sorry. He wasn't much of a talker anyway. Even when you screwed up, he didn't talk. He hit, but he didn't talk. Was your dad proud of you? And at the time he died, I, I, don't know, I guess I wasn't much to be proud of. You were his son. You know how hard it is to make money off Broadway? It's real hard. I did it. But it wasn't good enough. Nothing is ever good enough, regardless of what I do. It wasn't good enough. The play didn't go to Broadway. Not good enough. Six years ago, he begs me to come into the business. The man sat at the front table at Ratner's crying for me to come into the business. You know, the business has grown 30% since then. Oh, but I'm sure I had nothing to do with that. I mean, we both know I have absolutely no talent for this business. You know what I, you know what I really don't have? I don't have his hunger for it. He looks at me, and he sees the one thing he can never have again, his youth. Looks at me, he sees the future without him. Drives him nuts. I only want one thing from him. I just want him to acknowledge that I have value. We don't want that, David, you know? But your father's still alive. You still got that chance. Just... just... Just wanted to be my father. I love that son of a bitch, son. I just figured that if Eli gets his merchandise off the boat, he's happy. And he pays you back, so you're happy, too. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, I thought you were calling me up here to thank me. I rarely thank people. The release of Eli's goods was done without my knowledge or consent. If you want me to do things or not do things, it'd be good if you let me in on it. I don't walk around with a Ouija board. Where's Johnny Coke bottles? He's nursing the beating I gave him. Oh, you think so? Yeah. He was arrested by federal agents. What makes you say that? Because if the NYPD had him, I'd know it. I have led an unblemished life. This man, 
could hurt me. Good night, Vince. Good night. For Sheets testifying, you're gonna do hard time, Johnny, unless you testify against Penzolo. And we'll protect you. Don't tell me about protection, McPike. Tell Jimmy the weasel he sings. You protect him for life. So he makes like Caruso. And all of a sudden, you don't want to protect him anymore. I give you my word. Your word? You don't have the juice to make your word stick. Pinzola has a contract on you. You're lying. He wants you dead, John. You know how I know you're lying? Because if the guy did have a hit out, you'd never get a smell of it. That's the beauty of the guy. You're out of here. What? You're out of here. You're not going to talk. I'm not paying for your smokes and your beer. You're out on your own recognizance. Will you let me go? I'm not letting you go. I'm kicking you out. No, you can't. You can't send me out there. You can't send me out there like this. Why not? Pinzola's not after you. That's what you said. You got nothing to worry about. You'd never know if he had a hit out. How could you? You got a man inside his organization. Talk to you, I'm a dead man. Yeah? You don't talk to me. You're out that door. Hold this, way. John. John! John! All right, I'll see you later. You want a stitch? Oh, good morning, Mr. Pinzolo. Hey, you hear about Johnny Coke bottles? Yeah, from Page, huh? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pinzolo. You're welcome.